Welcome to this video animation on the sender method of DNA sequencing. This method is also known as the chain termination method of DNA sequencing. This is a well-tested method of sequencing and the following video will outline the principles on which this method of DNA sequencing works. Firstly, the DNA to be sequenced must be denatured and converted from double-stranded DNA into single-stranded DNA. This is done through the application of heat. The DNA splits into a template strand and its complementary strand. A primer is then annealed to the template strand. This is to allow the addition of nucleotides later. Four reaction mixtures are set up. Added to each of these is the template strand of DNA with attached primer. This is the DNA that will be sequenced. This is followed by the addition of DNA polymerase. Free nucleotides, or DNTPs, are then added to the reaction mixtures. One of these DNTPs is usually radio-labeled with a 32 phosphorus or 35 sulfur atom. This helps in determining the DNA sequence later. Modified nucleotides, or DDNTPs, are then added to the reaction mixtures. Only one type of DDNTP is added to each reaction mixture. Chain termination occurs after the addition of DDNTP due to the fact that there's no OH group available to attack the next DNTP. The DNA must now be separated on size. This is done using a process known as gel electrophoresis. A sample of each of the four reaction mixtures is taken and pipetted into a separate lane on the gel. Polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis can separate polynucleotide chains differing in size by one nucleotide. A current is set up across the gel and the DNA is inserted at the end with the negative electrode. As the DNA is negatively charged, it will begin to migrate towards the positive electrode. Smaller fragments will move faster than larger fragments. The gel is dried down and an X-ray taken. Since we radio labelled a DNTP, we can now see it show up on the X-ray film. It will show up as bands across the X-ray film which can be used to find out the sequence of DNA. We know that each reaction mixture had the same primer, therefore all of the strands begin with the same sequence. Each chain in a particular flask ends in a sequence determined by whatever dideoxy NTP was added to that flask. For example, a DNA strand taken from the flask to which dideoxy ATP was added will end in an A or adenine nucleotide. We can use this information to determine the sequence of DNA by reading across the various bands on the X-ray film.